Everyone's looking at these statues, and I'm still looking at the birds. When people think of South Dakota, one of the first things to come to mind is the landmarks. Known for some of the biggest and most beautiful monuments in the country, South Dakota is a destination for people wanting to see part of America's history in the grandest fashion possible. Since these national monuments are built into the land, the areas surrounding them are filled with nature. On my trip to South Dakota, I decided to visit these places and take in the views, along with seeing what birds I could find there. The first stop, the Crazy Horse Memorial. Hey everyone, I'm here at the Crazy Horse Monument. I'm looking at some of the monuments in South Dakota today and I'm gonna see if there's any birds in this area as well. Crazy Horse was a Native American war hero who fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn, leading the Lakotas against Custer's soldiers as they moved to push them out of the Black Hills. Many years later, Lakota Chief Henry Standing Bear asked sculptor Korchak Zielkowski to create a memorial to honor Native Americans and the decision was made to depict Crazy Horse. Zielkowski started work on May 3, 1947, and his life was dedicated to building the monument. Once finished, it will stand 641 feet long and 563 feet high, making it the second tallest statue in the world if completed to the specifications it was designed with. It will show Crazy Horse mounted on horseback with his arm outstretched over the Black Hills. Even though it's still under construction, the Crazy Horse Memorial draws in many tourists each year to see the progress of the statue, as well as to visit the Native American Museum and Cultural Center on site. So far here we've seen some pigeons, some barn swells, and some mountain bluebirds, but it's a beautiful day and this whole area is really cool. One of my favorite birds I found at the Crazy Horse Memorial was the mountain bluebird. The mountain bluebird is a friendly bird of the western United States. They live in a wide variety of habitats, including flat areas such as grasslands and meadows, along with mountainsides and other high elevation environments. They can be found in the northwestern United States in summer and migrate to the southwestern U.S. and Mexico to spend the winter. The mountain bluebird can be identified by its all blue appearance, as opposed to the rusty orange that both the western and eastern bluebird have. Male mountain bluebirds are darker blue on top and lighter blue and white underneath. The female is gray-blue with brighter blue on the wings and tail. This species feeds mostly on insects and other invertebrates during breeding season, but in winter they feed more on plant-based foods, including berries and sumac seeds. With work still being done on the monument, on this day I wasn't able to explore the forests and roads near the statue itself. Even so, I was able to find some cool birds and learn a lot about the region's history. My next stop was the monument that gave South Dakota its nickname, Mount Rushmore. I've officially gone full tourist mode and I'm at Mount Rushmore. And I have not heard any birds yet, but you better believe I'm going to figure out if any are around. <laughs> October 4th, 1927 marked the beginning of Mount Rushmore's construction by sculptor Gutzon Borglum and his team. The carving depicts the faces of four U.S. presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. The statue was made to represent the creation, progression, and preservation of the United States. Presently, the area consists of over a thousand acres of land, including museums and walking trails, and is host to over two million annual visitors. Walking one of the trails, I was able to find a very interesting woodpecker. I was able to locate a new bird for this state for me, the black-backed woodpecker, and I've only ever seen one of those before. Maybe it was two different individuals in Sac Zim, so really happy to get one in this really interesting environment of Mount Rushmore where everyone's looking at these statues and I'm still looking at the birds. The black-backed woodpecker is a medium-sized woodpecker with a white underside, black wings, and black barring on the side. Unlike many other North American woodpeckers that have red on their head, Male blackback woodpeckers have a patch of yellow. This species typically lives in the boreal forests of Canada, but the range dips in the United States in certain parts of the country, such as northern Minnesota and some of the western states. Blackback woodpeckers tend to look for forests that have been recently burned, where they feed on wood boring insects. They tend to stay in the same area for several years. 
I continued on the paths closer to the statues. I was surprised by the amount of woods bordering the trails making for great animal habitat. Eventually, I got to the end of the walkable area and up as close as possible to the monument. Here, I found a different variant of a familiar species, the dark-eyed junco. Dark-eyed juncos are common birds in the sparrow family that are widespread in North America. They inhabit parts of the east and west coast year-round and migrate into the Midwestern states in the colder months, serving as a harbinger of winter. Their diet consists primarily of seeds, but they will also eat insects when they are available in spring and summer. One thing that makes dark-eyed juncos interesting is that they have an array of different colored subspecies. This particular bird was of the white-winged subspecies, named for the two white bars that adorn their wings. While I've seen plenty of dark-eyed juncos in my life, this was the first white-winged. After spending a little more time admiring the statues, I called it a day. It was fun to be able to see some of the most well-known American landmarks, all while being able to observe the birds as well. It's nice to know that the areas surrounding these monuments that represent freedom in America's history are still wild enough to contain some amazing creatures. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Thank <music> you.